Hello, Ryan here, AK Mac, and welcome. Today, we're going to talk about Stanton 3.0 and the map. Recently revealed in Around the Verse, it was a sneak peek, was a Stanton map, which is expected, I think, for 3.0. In 3.0, we'll have access to only the Stanton system until jump points are released, which I think is coming on 4.0, but that's way off. Uh, don't worry, though, though, the Stanton system is very big. I think it's around 5 AU across. This isn't official. I don't, I don't know. We'll have to pass on that one. Uh, but there will be lots available in this video. I want to go through what we can expect to be exploring once 3.0 drops. So potential locations, some of the missions that we may get, and some cool gameplay scenarios. Stanton itself is a four-planet system. I expect each planet will have locations similar to what we have in, in the Crusader, the baby PU now. So things like Coma Rays, Cryastro, shipping hubs, space stations, wrecks, satellites, and as well the newly revealed truck stop, just to name a few. But we will also be able to land on the 12 moons and explore. And yes, there are 12 moons uh, within the Stanton system. Many of them will be scattered with outposts. Again, more shipwrecks. Some of them may be inhabited, others derelict. Plus, there's an asteroid belt and a frost line. Now, we already know the four planets. There's Crusader, Arcor, Microtech and Hurston. Crusader is a gas giant. This is the location of the baby persistent universe is what we're currently playing in now in 2.6.2, which has just been released. Although it's a gas giant, the atmosphere is breathable at high altitude. So for 3.0, I expect to see people living and working upon a high rise sort of buildings and platforms. Around Crusader's orbit, we can see many of the locations which populate space. This is likely to change somewhat. I think they've crammed it all into the PU just so that we've got stuff to explore. Uh, so the current formation of places of interest like Kovalex Shipping Hub, Security post career. They may not be in the usual place. Uh, it's, it's kind of unknown what CIG will will keep um, considering the majority of these satellites and space stations and our modular. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did replace them or at least just spread them out a little bit. But the moons for Crusader surrounding there, there are three moons. I think these were recently debuted on ATV. We have Selin, Dema, and Yella. Yella, we already know, it looks like it's got an asteroid field or asteroid belt surrounding it. Uh, which will make some great opportunities, although I th the star map shows that the asteroid belt surrounds the star, the Stanton star, the main star, rather than a single moon. But we will see. It may change, it may not. The other two are Daymar and Selin, and I think one may be like a rocky or desert, and the other one could possibly be an ice moon uh, due to the preview that we saw of it. My guess would be that Daymar is the most likely to be an ice moon, considering it's sheltered by Crusader from the sun. Uh, but there is a known ice moon within the Stanton system, so it could be that one that they showed off. But with Crusader, I think the imports will likely be, you know, it's the home of the Genesis Starliner, so I would have thought the imports would reflect this. Maybe the components that go into creating ships like metals and electronics will be your imports. And also with it having a potential residential area for the workers, uh, there could be luxury goods and general goods which will be brought in and out. Exports, the most obvious export would be fuel. Crusader, as we know, is a gas giant. But with it being Crusader Industries, they own the the whole planet. I wouldn't be surprised if they, if unauthorized gas collection is illegal there. Uh, I expect Crusader in uh, Industries would likely use the fuel and collect it themselves to sell on, rather than allow freelancers to come and gather it up. But again, it's all down to uh, how the ec economics work. But that said, 3.0 may have the ability to gather, gather fuel from there because I don't think there's another gas giant in the system. So there needs to be some form of fuel trading with the, the Starfarer. Anyway, the next planet is Arcor. Now, this is 100% covered with buildings. Currently, Area 18 is available. It's the section that we have of Arcor to uh, to explore, known as the Planet Side Module. I'm not sure how uh, Arcor will be presented. I assume areas like Area 18 will be accessible via space and landing pads. And we have seen a demo of Terra's underground transit system uh, so I would expect Arco will have similar things to that in order to explore the surface. It has two moons. You've got Lyria, which is the icy moon that I... Uh, it could have been the one that we saw rather than a Crusader moon. This is home to cryogeysers and cryovolcanoes. I'm pretty sure we saw some footage of this. I'll see if I can find that. Its second moon is Whaler or Walla which is particularly susceptible to tidal forces, resulting in the moons being sort of notably uh, prolate, which means that it protrudes in one direction somewhat more than the other. The imports for Arcor. Now, Arcor's known for producing thrusters, so imports will again be things to reflect this. So expect things like hydrogen or other types of fuel, and again, metal and electronics. 
Exports obviously will be the engines themselves or the thrusters they produce and anything else that Art Core actually produces on its planet. Now the third planet is called Hurston. This is the closest planet to the main sequence dwarf G-Star. It's severely polluted due to Hurston Dynamics' heavy industry in creating munitions and weapons. Upon the planet is Lawville, they say, which is one of their many town or many company towns established for employees and one of the only import landing zones on the planet as well. Now, Hurston has four moons. You've got Ita, Ariel, Aberdeen, and Magda. And again, all these, we don't know anything about these moons, but they're all landable. Unfortunately, the, all the descriptions that we have on the star map just tell us why they were named or who they were named after. But uh, yeah, we'll be able to visit them. Uh, imports will likely be components for crafting the weapons and munitions which Hurston's produces. Think along the lines of metals for shells uh, and rocket casing, electronics for any missiles using the, the guided systems. Also, it will be habited like other planets, and the workers, as I understand it, are conditioned to stay on this planet, so everything they need is on the planet. So a lot of the Hurston workers do not actually leave. So things like general food stuff, all the way to luxury goods, will need to be imported. In terms of exports, now Hurston is known for being a rich in mineable ore, so maybe similar to Crusader, the mined resources are used for production purposes only by Hurston Dynamics for their weapons and munitions. So potentially we could have exports of ores, it depends on whether they use them all up. But definitely weapons and munitions of all kinds. So expect to do some cargo runs with weapons, although you would be a prime target for pirates, so you'll need a lot of, a lot of protection when you're coming out of Hurston. So the final planet is Microtech, which is probably my favourite. This is a nice planet due to a terraforming error which left the planet with an unnaturally dense cloud cover, creating this sort of colder than average climate. It also houses the company who produced Mobiglass. It's got three moons. It's got Calliope, Cleo and... I'm pretty sure, I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Thanks for that, Rach. You carry on. Uh, oh, they're all named after ancient Greek gods, um, or ancient Greeks, sorry, if you're wondering. Again, there's nothing been said about them other than how they've been named, so nothing more to say there. It has been mentioned in the sneak peek that imports are mostly optical uh, processes and quantum hyperconductors, whatever the hell they are, um, but their exports are Mobiglass and potentially ice. You know, it's a nice planet. Ice needs to be uh, brought in and out, so who knows, not in. But anyway, for 3.0, I believe there will be, I think they said they've got around 20 commodities. These are the base commodities that are going to be released first. Whether one of these or two of these are optical processors and quantum hyperconductors, I don't know. But it does make sense to create commodities that will be found in the Stanton system first, just for the sake of it making perfect sense. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the basic commodities like ores, scrap metals, uh, electronics, food, stuffs, and so on and so forth. We will have to see. But anyway, the sneak peek that we saw, it was of Stanton 4, and it was using this system layout tool that they have, or system editor tool. Bear in mind, it is all work in progress, so things will likely change places and look a bit different to what we have here. But it started with a close-up or a shot of Stanton 4, which is Microtech, and it says it contains a cargo hub, which is used for shipping and hauling jobs. Uh, Calliope is the stant is one of the moons, and it says also this, this is close to, it's a hub close to Microtech. But the imports to Calliope will be optical processes as well, so I'm not sure how, why they need them, but we will see. Imports for Cleo, the other moon, is quantum hyperconductors. I'm guessing that they haven't filled it out completely, so there will be a lot of iterations to this. But all these moons, we will be able to land upon them and explore. There are 12 moons in total. Many of them will be scattered with outposts. Some of them will be inhabited, others may be derelict. And it looks as though some of these moons will have import and exports. I mean, if there's an outpost on one of the moons, they may require some food supplies or some medical supplies which will need to be taken to them. And one example that Chris Roberts did say was that, you you know, you have to deliver some supplies to an outpost which requires you to land a few miles away from the outpost itself because you can't fly to it, load up a land vehicle and then drive the goods directly to the, to the outpost themselves. If pirates get wind of this, then they could attack you in space or they could set up an ambush planet side and wait for you to pass. Uh, but also with all these explorable areas, both planets and in space, expect to see a continual amount of trading jobs generated by the economy. Obviously, this is first the first iteration of it, so it might not run so smoothly, but there's always going to be jobs for cargo trading. Along with this, again, comes pirate activity, but in turn, that brings a lot of mercenary jobs, so there'll be actual things to do and lots of places to visit. Other potential jobs could be investigating outposts uh, or space stations. Some of them, again, could be derelict, or maybe some of them taken over by pirates. I hope 
that we'll get to see some inhabited by unknown species uh, and we have to figure out what happened to the workers maybe fight our way in or fight our way out but anyway this is just an insight into the vast play area that will come with 3.0 whenever it actually finally arrives there's going to be a lot to do and this don't forget is just one system this is one system with four planets those four planets hold 12 moons in total each with space stations or outposts there is a lot to do and then 4.0 though you know we probably shouldn't even talk about 4.0 it's a myth at this moment but anyway let me know your thoughts guys i am super hyped for 3.0 Yes, it will probably come towards the end of this year. I I hope it comes early or mid. We'll have to see how far they get with this networking. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Hit that like button as well. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter and Instagram. And I'll catch you later. Remember, courtesy of my patrons, I'm giving away a Star Citizen starter package. Commenting on any of my videos throughout the course of April and being a subscriber to the channel will enter you for the draw, which I shall draw at the end of the month. After which, I'll start a new giveaway. Tweeting, sharing, and following me on other platforms found below won't better your chances, but it would be super awesome of you.